And so we begin chapter four. So chapter three, uh, we looked at all of the derivative rules uh, with some application. Uh, chapter four, uh, we're gonna um, see how the derivative relates to the graph of a function. We talked about it a little bit, but not a, a, a whole lot. So this is now gonna be a visual aspect of derivatives, uh, as well as algebraic. <clears throat> Okay, so we got to spend some time going over definitions and theorems and all that fun stuff. All right, first definition, absolute extrema. Let f be defined on an interval i containing c. So f of c is the minimum of f on i if, actually, I should have said absolute, sorry, absolute minimum on of f on i if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in i. So if that function value is the absolute smallest function value, that is considered the absolute minimum. So we can take its opposite. f of c is the absolute max Uh, of f on i if that function value is the largest, so it's greater than or equal to f of x for all x and i. So these uh, absolute max and min values are also called the absolute extrema. Okay, so we'll get into it later how to actually find those, but that's that's the vocabulary for you. Okay, so uh, first theorem of the chapter, extreme value theorem. Uh, if f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, then f has both an absolute max and an absolute min. It would have to. Because it's saying, okay, if you go from A to B and it's continuous, you know, your function is going to have to curve around from A to B and it's going to curve around however it wants to. It could even just be a line going from it that connects the two. It could be a horizontal line going all the way across. Um, but it's got to be continuous. Uh, so if it's continuous, then there's going to be an absolute max and an absolute min. So your absolute max would live up there because that's the highest value on the interval. And then on right there, that would be your absolute min because it's the lowest. So if, if it's continuous on the interval, then there has to be the two. If it's not continuous, then it's not necessarily. It might, but it's not guaranteed. Okay, let's look at uh, relative extrema. So this is a little different than absolute, otherwise they wouldn't have the two categories. So for relative extrema, uh, if there is an open interval containing C on which F of C is a max, then F of C is a relative max. So instead of looking like at the entire interval, it might only look at a certain section. Uh, so in that little section, it's a, rel it's a relative max. It's relative to its position uh, versus other places. So the flip of it, if there's an op open interval containing C on which F of C is a min, then F of C is a relative min. So these extrema are also referred to as the local uh, max or the local min. Okay. All right, and the last thing of vocabulary is uh, gonna be associated with these relative extrema because that, that's the stuff that's a bit more readily found than the absolute. So how do you find them? Well, we need these things called critical numbers. So let f be defined at c. So if 
f prime of c is equal to zero or f prime of c does not exist, it's undefined. So if either of those two cases happen, then c is a critical number of f. So then the theorem that goes with that is that if f has a relative max or min uh, at x equals c, then c is a critical number. And then c comma f of c is a critical point of f. Okay, so in the next example, um, I'm going to stop the video here. Um, we'll do it in the next video, but we'll actually do what this says. This is how you actually find out where your critical numbers are.